Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about unsafe lock. We're going to go down the technology rabbit hole about some researchers who were invited to a private event to try to hack anything in a room and they chose to try to hack the lock and they did it successfully. All right, so in summary, um, in March 2024, a team of researchers uh, disclosed a series of vulnerabilities in Dorma Kaba's safe lock electronic RFID locks. They named these series of vulnerabilities unsafe lock. These locks are used worldwide, and these vulnerabilities affect probably about 3 million locks. Dorma Kaba is the company whose systems are affected. It's not all their systems, it's just some. And um, SafeLock System 6000 is one of those systems. So flaws were identified in the key derivation algorithm used to create MyFair Classic Keys and a secondary encryption algorithm that secures the underlying card data. The researchers demonstrated that it was possible to forge the key cards um, that can unlock any door within a, a property or in a campus. The attack requires a key card from the property. This can be a valid card or an expired card. and also requires the RFID read-write device um, to read and write the necessary codes onto the key cards. Um, these forged key cards can be used to gain the unauthorized access once they're um, hacked. Um, or reverse engineered. They reverse engineered everything. Uh, you can find the video that they created online that demonstrated it. And note that there were two cards are involved for each access. So normally when someone accesses a door, when there is a valid card, it's usually one. For some reason, this process that they created or that they follow uses two cards um, for each door that they wanted to access. All right, so Dorma Cabal issued updates to address the vulnerabilities. The company provided a mitigation solution and recommended that all customers um, follow those um, recommendations to, the, to prevent problems with these affected systems. They also provided a self-assessment tool and a self-serve guide to help customers figure out if their system was affected. Uh, the company has not reported any known instances of these vulnerabilities being exploited in the real world. Uh, key card systems work by encoding a key card with digital credentials that are read by a reader. The lock's mechanism engages or disengages um, based on the validity of those credentials, which are managed by the access management software. Uh, these systems typically use encryption to secure the data on the key cards and the communication between the card, the reader, and the software. Um, however, the unsafe lock vulnerabilities exposed weaknesses in the encryption and key generation processes that could be exploited to compromise the security. All right, so the key thing here is that it exposed the weaknesses in the processes. It didn't, um, it didn't access or hack the, the actual encryption. It affected the processes, the generation processes. Okay, so how do card key card systems normally work? Cards are usually programmed um, sometimes at the front desk using software and tools that write um, data to the cards. The cards use RFID technology, which was mentioned earlier. And they the cards have expiration dates, and when they when they're returned or if they're lost or something, they can be reprogrammed uh, for different customers and doors, or they can be invalidated, so you can't use them again. Encryption is used um, in these systems. In fact, this particular system or some of the systems that we're referencing from Dorma use uses AES-256, which is considered a very strong encryption. So what are some of the takeaways? The vulnerabilities are in the encryption process, not in the encryption. Uh, this, this has not been documented to have happened out in the wild by any bad guys. It was performed by researchers at a private event that they were invited to to um, hack a hotel room. The, uh, any resort or hotel owner should prioritize and follow the mitigation solutions provided by Dormacaba if they believe that their systems are affected. So, um, so what are some of the rabbit hole questions about this particular breach? Well, when the heck are, um, well, how did the researchers do it? And when are they going to provide more details to curious people like you and me who want to know how they actually did it? And how did the two cards come into play? Because again, if uh, real quick, when they, when they talked about how they accessed the doors, it involved two card keys, uh, key cards. And it also in included having to get hold of 
at least one of the key cards, even if it was an expired one, and they had to access, um, I think, the software. So they did some reverse engineering, and they referenced that, but they don't really tell anybody what they, what they how they did it. Um, and hopefully we'll learn about the vulnerabilities and how they figured it out uh, when, when they release the information. I suspect that they'll release that information when they feel more confident that um, a lot of these locations have um, resolved and mitigated the, the risks. So RFID, what is RFID? It's radio frequency identification. It refers to a wireless system comprised of two components, tags and readers. The reader is a device that has one or more antennas that will emit the radio waves and receive signals back from an RFID chip, uh, tag. Tags use the radio waves to communicate their identity and other information to nearby readers. And um, tags can be passive or they can be aggress um, active. Passive RFID tags are powered by the reader and they do not have a battery. Active RFID tags are powered by batteries. RFID tags can store uh, a lot of information, anything from like a serial number to maybe pages of information. Readers can be mobile, so they can be carried by hand or they can be mounted on a post or overhead or a lock on a door. Reader systems can also be built into the architecture of um, cabinets, rooms, buildings, the door. Encryption. So encryption is a way of scrambling data so that um, only authorized people or parties can understand the information or devices. In technical terms, it is the process of converting human readable plain text to um, incomprehensible text or undecipherable text. Um, it's also known as ciphertext. In simpler terms, encryption takes readable data, it alters or modifies it so that it appears random, um, encryption requires the use of a cryptographic key, a set of mathematical values that both the sender and the recipient of an encrypted message agree on. So AES-256. So AES-256 encryption is, is considered a block cipher that operates on a fixed size blocks of data, 128 bits um, or 16 bytes. It uses secret key that is um, uses a secret key that is 256 bits bits long. The process of encryption and decryption in AES is a series of repetitive steps called rounds. Um, there are 14 rounds of processing. Um, this AES-256 is considered secure, and um, if you want to do the math, it's 2 to the 256 power combinations. All right, so this particular um, research was done with reverse engineering. So reverse engineering is the process of taking a piece of software or hardware, analyzing its functions and information flows so that its functionality and behavior could be understood. Malware is commonly reverse engineered in cyber defense. And so um, sometimes when you hack things, you find a piece of hardware or something. You also have to hack it. You have to figure out how it was created and how it's made in order to figure out how to break it. So there was a lot of articles involved in my learning about this particular um, set of vulnerabilities. And so here's my list. And so it'll also be in the description in the YouTube video. But securityaffairs.com, assistonline.org, wired.com, hackernews.com, securityaffairs.com. Again, um, FDA, Cloudflare, Wikipedia, CyberWire, these were all sites that I went to to try to learn a little bit more about this particular um, vulner set of vulnerabilities. I also went to uh, Dorma Cabal, which I forgot to put on this list of credits, and they actually have a lot of information about their systems, um, including how they, how they work. So that's actually a really good site if you want to learn how the systems work. And um, the researchers. So I tried to do a little digging about the researchers, found a couple YouTube videos um, that will also be on my list when I finish this. All right, so again, unsafe lock is a term that references some research uh, vulnerabilities that were discovered and the group that did, found it notified the company. The company is trying to do the best they can to mitigate and reduce the risk and catch up and make sure everybody is safe. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about this when uh, the researchers feel comfortable releasing the details. Thank you. Hope you had a good time. Thank you. Bye-bye.